Hello again, welcome to the video about configuring storage. Um, and uh, by storage I'm talking about the storage manager and the standalone drive section here. And you'll see this, uh, this target headed section appears under both backup and archive. So when you're using the backup and archive products, the target for your backups and archives is something which has been configured via this um, storage section here. The, uh, the backup to go and synchronize products are different in that they target their backups uh, and replications um, at folders that exist on client machines in the case of synchronize or in the case of backup to go a folder that's been provisioned for backing up workstations to. The way that backup and archive work is fundamentally different. Backup and archive both target their backups and archives at either tape, and a tape can exist either within a standalone tape drive, or it can exist within a tape library, whereby there's an automatic ability to move tapes from slots into the drive and back again and so on. Um, <clears throat> or you can use disk as a target for backup and archive, but if you're using disk, then what we do is we create a disk library where we write to a um, one or more container files and these container files behave within RQS interface just the same as tapes. Now in order to explain this uh, before we actually go through the, the interface to configure it, um, we're going to do a little bit of uh, a diagram again to put across the general concepts that we have. The basic unit of storage with RQS is a volume. And a volume can either be a tape, or it can be a file. So a tape obviously is a physical cartridge, whereas a file is something which exists on a, uh, on a disk. But either is considered within Prestor to be a volume, and that means that you can use tape hardware, or just regular disk storage, as a repository for backup and archive, so that gives us a certain amount of flexibility. Capacity-wise, current tape technology, LTO6, gives you two and a half terabytes of capacity per tape. The link on screen is a Wikipedia page about LTO tape, which has a table showing the capacities for the various different LTO generations. Uh, whereas the disk capacity is really just limited by the amount of storage that you've got, but typically you might make your volume files um, 500 gigabytes in size. So um, if you're using a standalone tape drive, then you're limited to um, about 2.5 terabytes for current tape technology before you have to eject that tape from your standalone drive, put another one in, continue the job. Uh, with disk, you can have a folder um, where, that's a folder, where you've got maybe the two terabytes worth of storage, and therefore you would have four volume files, each at 500 gigabytes, and Archiware would be able to write to one file, fill that one up, move to the next one, and so on. Same deal with the tape, uh, with tape, so if you use a tape library um, with a number of slots in it, small library might have 8 to 12 slots and the bigger libraries have 50 plus slots. So a tape library allows you to access more than one 2.5 terabyte LTO6 tape. If you've got an 8 slot library then 8 times 2.5, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, about 20 terabytes worth of storage. Um, and the, the library will physically move tapes from slots into the tape drive and back out again to allow unattended access to more than one tape. So you can run a backup that's 10 terabytes and the, the library will load four or five tapes for you as required for that job to complete. So just to summarize, storage is configured and can either be tape or disk. And this basically is um, then split between libraries and standalone drives. So a, uh, a tape library is a device that has slots 
and can actually have more than one physical tape drive in it so you could have a library with two drives or alternatively you can just have a standalone tape drive that holds one tape so that's tape storage and for disk what you would typically do is take a folder that exists on a piece of storage with a reasonable amount of storage available and then inside of that folder we create uh, volumes which are files and you can choose the size that the volumes are going to be and how many of them that you're going to have to total the amount of storage that you want to make available on that disk. Now once you've configured your volume, be it a tape or a file on a disk, um, what happens is you've got your backup or archive job that you're running which will ultimately consist of lots of files that you want to archive or back up that are beginning their life on disk. And what you'll do is you'll create an archive or backup plan, uh, plan being the name for the jobs that you create within Archiware. And that uh, backup or archive plan will write the data, so the files that, that start off on disk, into the volume, when the volume will be either a, either a tape or a file on disk. So if this was a file on disk, then we basically write the data sequentially into this file until the file, uh, the volume, has reached its uh, capacity of, say, 500 gigabytes, and then we'll move on to the next one. Likewise, if we were writing to a tape volume, we'll sequentially write the tape from the beginning of the tape through to the end till the tape is full, and then we'll need another tape to continue running the job if the job has more data than fits on one tape. So volumes are used in sequence and we move from one volume to the next in order to provide the amount of capacity that's required by the job. And the same thing happens whether it's disk or tape. Great, so hopefully that's a bit clearer. Um, right, so if we look at the backup uh, module, going to Storage Manager, what I'm going to do is configure a disk library first to show you how that works and what that looks like. So um, down at the bottom here, we're going to click on New Disk Storage. And this will pop up a new window where we get to basically choose the directory on the disk where we want this storage to uh, reside. And then we get some choices to, with regards to how much space we want to provide on that disk. And then we also get the option to label volumes at the same time. Now at this point in the sequence of videos we haven't yet covered uh, labeling so um, we're going to hold off on that part for now and cover that in the next video. Uh, but what we will do is make a new folder for our backups to uh, for our storage managers to reside on. So I'm going to use the P5 demo desktop folder and on there I'm going to create a new folder called disk library and you see that folder appears on the desktop and also appears in the P5 browser over here. We'll select that one and I want to limit the space to 20 gigabytes. In a real world uh, solution obviously you'll be looking at hundreds or thousands of gigabytes but for the purposes of our training this is fine. And then we apply that and in the interface here we see we've got something called disk lib1, disk library number one and um, if we double click on it we can see how that storage space has been allocated up. So you remember I said that there are a number of uh, container files each has a maximum size and so because we specified 20 gigabytes of storage that we wanted to make available down here uh, Arcuware has decided that there are going to be 10 container files each and each of those container files will grow up to 2 gigabytes in size before the next one is used. If you want to, you can tweak these two figures here to give you a different um, total amount of storage or to change the individual size of volumes. Until we actually label volumes, which we'll, as I said, cover in the next video, there are no files yet existing within this disk library uh, folder. Everything is just being configured at this point in time. So we now have the possibility of having 10 different volumes within that folder each of which can be two gigabytes in size. So that's fine, I'm going to apply that, close it. So that's how you set up a, uh, a disk library. The procedure for adding a physical tape library is as follows. You click the new tape library button at the bottom 
and uh, this time we're going to auto detect connected tape libraries. So at this point you need to make sure that your tape library hardware is connected to the machine that Prestor is running on, be that uh, fiber channel, SAS, however it's connected. And you may want to use operating system tools to query the bus that the library is connected on and just establish that it is correctly connected. Because if the operating system can't see the tape device then Archiware will not be able to see it either. So um, when we hit next, Archiware scans and in this instance it's uh, <coughs> determined that there are two uh, storage tape libraries attached. I'm going to add the first one and uh, the recommended option here unless you're um, told by a support person otherwise is to stick with the automatic assignment of drives. Hit next again and uh, the product will figure out the tape drives that are in the tape library and add both the tape drives and the tape library. Uh, the last step of adding the tape library is to decide whether or not you want to label media um, that may be present in the tape library into pools. Now the, the, the volumes and pools video uh, that follows this one will go into more detail about the labeling process. So for now we're going to leave do not label selected and clicking don't label will um, close the wizard for adding the library and now we can see our Tanberg storage loader library showing up and uh, if we click on standalone drives then we see the LTO6 drive within the tape library. So when you add a tape library you'll see one entry under storage manager for the tape library itself and this is really relates to the um, the robotic arm mechanism in the library that can move the tapes around that we need to control and then within the library there will be one or more tape drives so this library has one drive in it and that's shown here and uh, you can see various details listed here about the drive and if we go back to the storage manager there are then a number of buttons down here which relate to the operation of the library. So you can choose uh, to label tapes within the library by the label button. You can do an inventory to discover what tapes are currently within the library via the inventory button. And the load unload button, which I'll click now briefly, allows you to move tapes between slots within the library and mail slots, which are uh, slots within tape libraries which allow tapes to be transferred out of the library and into the library individually. By double clicking on the library once it's been added we get to see the first and last accessible slot within the library. So this is a 12 slot library and because Archiware is licensed um, according to the number of slots that you're able to use in a, in a tape library you can see this, uh, this library having 12 slots is using 12 slot licenses. So if you have a 25 slot license then you could add two libraries of this size and still have one slot left over. So there ends the uh, storage video. Please take a look at the pools and volumes video which follows.